This week you're going to be doing an activity where you look at a food label and you answer some questions on it. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with food labels, but I wanted to just guide you to some information that you might have some misinformation about or maybe some information you're just not even aware of and um, you're not sure how to use it to make better purchasing choices. Um, you can also use this video to answer some of the questions in your study guide. So the very first thing I want to point out to you is that all of the information on this nutrition facts is based on this serving size right here. So you can see for this macaroni and cheese, it's three and a half ounces for a serving, and then there's four servings per container. So if you were to eat this whole box, which maybe someone would, maybe that would be their portion, a portion is different from a serving size, then you would want to multiply all these numbers by four to get information about the nutrients that you're consuming in your portion. So serving size is different from, por from a portion and all of the information on this label is based on this serving size listed right here at the top. So here are all of the nutrients that need to be on a food label, some of them are macronutrients like total fat, also saturated and trans fat have to be on the label, but other fats like mono and polyunsaturated fats don't have to be on the label. Um, cholesterol, total carbohydrate, fiber and sugars, added sugars and natural sugars are not distinguished from one another. We'll talk more about that when we um, dive into more about carbohydrates. Also starch doesn't have to be listed on the label here. Um, protein is another one. And then the only vitamins and minerals that have to be listed are these right here. Um, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, iron, and then sodium as well, which is up here. So because of that, sometimes a product might look like it doesn't have very many vitamins and minerals when it actually does, but they're just not listed on the nutrition facts. So the nutrition facts doesn't necessarily give you a whole picture about the vitamins and minerals that are in the product that you're eating. Um, now sometimes um, food manufacturers will list a lot more vitamins and minerals, especially when they're trying to market their product, like for example, Total Cereal they are marketing that their cereal is basically a vitamin and mineral supplement and you get everything you need in just this bowl of cereal and so they'll list out a bunch of different vitamins and minerals. The percentages here that you see, these are daily values and these daily values are based on an old recommendation. They're actually based on um, the 1969 RDA. They haven't been updated. I've heard that they're going to be, but you know, it's not really too big a concern because with these daily values, we're really just using them for product comparison. Your textbook mentions that you can look at them to get an idea of your own personal recommendations, and that is not the case because they are an outdated recommendation. But how we're gonna use them is we are going to say, let me scroll down here, we're gonna say that the magic percent daily value is 10%. In other words, if a nutrient has 10% or greater daily value, that nutrient is gonna be considered a good source. So for example, if you're looking for good sources of fiber or good sources of vitamin A, then you would wanna look for a daily value that is, that's not what I wanted, that is 10% or greater. So looking at this product, you can see that the macaroni and cheese is a good source of fat, a good source of saturated fat, which we may um, not want, definitely don't want the good sources of saturated fat. It's a good source of sodium, which we don't necessarily want. So just because it's a good source of something doesn't always mean that's a good thing. Um, a good source of carbohydrate, which is great, provides glucose for the brain. Um, a good source of protein and a good source of iron, calcium. Now there might be other vitamins and minerals that it's a good source of as well, but they're not necessarily listed on the label. So we're going to be using that a lot. And this is just a really easy tool to use when you are shopping and you're looking for good sources of things or maybe trying to cut back on things. So maybe you're trying to cut back on sodium. So you're going to pick a product that has a smaller daily value. Um, for sodium or for saturated fat. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is when talking about fat is that if there's a half a gram of fat or less, and this goes for other nutrients as well, not just fat, 
the label can put zero grams of fat on the nutrition facts. And why that's important, we'll talk more about when we talk about lipids, but oftentimes you'll see products marketing themselves as not having any fat, not having any trans fat, um, and they might have a little bit, but per serving they have a half a gram or less so they can put zero. Now if you're having a lot of servings of something, that actually might add up and you might be getting more than you're thinking. So this nutrition fact sometimes can be a little deceiving. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and unfortunately this label doesn't show it, is the ingredient list can be a really great place to look when trying to get nutrition information. The ingredients are a little bit high, harder to lie. There's a few less loopholes um, than the information on here and it's more kind of what you see is what you get. New ingredients are listed in descending order by weight so the first ingredient will be making the biggest contribution to the product, the last ingredient will be making the smallest contribution. And we'll be um, looking at labels and ingredient lists and things throughout the term in order to apply the information that we'll be discussing. So let me know if you have any questions on this. You can post your questions in the forums on Moodle. Thanks.